Hello everyone and welcome to Interclimate. My name is Shaleen and in this video I will tell you all about Environment Management Plan or EMP. So EMP is basically an elaborated plan that consists of mitigation, management, monitoring and institutional measures ensured during the development and operation of any environment related project to eliminate adverse environmental impacts or reduce them to an acceptable level. Necessary acts and rules must be considered when creating an environment management plan. So some of the major acts from this list includes the Environment Protection Act of 1986 and the Environmental Protection Rules of 2002, the EIA Notification 2006 and the subsequent amendments, the Water Act of 1974, the Air Act of 1981, the no Noise Pollution and Regulation Control Act of 1990, the Forest Conservation Act of 1980, the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, the Coastal Regulatory Zone Notification of 1991, the Motor Vehicles Act of 1988 and the Explosives Act of 1884. Now if you are wondering why your business may need an environment management plan to grow, we must be looking into the purpose of the environment management plan in setting up a business today. So EMP is an indispensable part of the Environment Impact Assessment Report which is mandatory for starting any development project. Usually project proponents regard environmental management plans simply as a legal requirement for their project and make it brief. Still, clear EMP including a detailed mitigation and monitoring planning will help create a strong environment impact assessment report which will be beneficial for the project proponent in the long run. Environment management plan consists of mitigation measures for each activity undertaken during the construction, operation and the entire life cycle of the project needing environmental clearance. The plan helps minimize adverse environmental impacts due to the project's activities. Therefore, a proper EMP of a corporation should have objectives like measures for safety, welfare and good health of the workforce and the populace, measures to minimize waste generation and pollution, judicious use of natural resources and water resources, vigilance against probable disasters and accidents, monitoring of cumulative and long-term impacts, how to ensure effective operation of all control measures, ensure effective operation of all control measures to ensure preservation of the environment. Coming on to what are the licenses and formalities involved in developing an EMP, so, to construct a proper environment management plan, the business must obtain all necessary licenses and permission for their project. Commonly required licenses include NOC and consent under the Air, Water and Environment Protection Act, permission to store hazardous material, permission for activities near protected archaeological sites, diversion of sanctuary land, permission for road construction etc., forest clearance or felling of trees, PUC certificates for the use of vehicles for construction, NOC for water extraction and construction and allied works and finally environmental clearance. Now it is also important for new and upcoming businesses to understand the relationship between environment impact assessment, environment management plan and environmental monitoring plan. So the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has notified criteria and rules regarding environment impact assessment in the EIA notification of 2006. The notification men mentions environment management plan as one of the requirements in the EIA report, which is prepared by project proponent requiring the environmental clearance. So EMP is a part of environment impact assessment that is often integrated directly into the EIA reports and describes the administrative aspects of ensuring that mitigative measures are implemented and their effectiveness is monitored after approval of the EIA. Environment management is different from environmental monitoring, but both are related. Environmental monitoring includes the technical aspects of monitoring the effectiveness of mitigation measures like measurement methodologies, reporting schedules, emergency procedures, frequency, location, data analysis, detailed budget and procurement schedules. EMP also delineates the environmental monitoring plan for compliance with various environmental regulations. EMP also lays down the steps that must be taken in emergency situations like accidents at the site. So let's understand how can one construct a proper environment management plan. So all environmental management plans must be constructed keeping in view the objectives of the EIA. However, the common factors that must be considered are mitigation plan. 
So mitigation plan is the key to ensure that environmental quality of that area will not deteriorate due to the project. The mitigation plan will cover all aspects of construction and operation phases related to the environment. Second is monitoring of environmental parameters. So environmental control measures can only be understood by adequately monitoring the environmental parameters. Detailed monitoring for different environmental parameters will be carried out as per the concerned authorities direction. Third is ambient air and water quality report. So parameters to access air quality includes monitoring the levels of SPM, RPM, SO2, NO2 or any other pollutant specified by the authorities depending on the nature of the project. Fourth one is stack emission report that includes analysis of emissions from boiler stacks to monitor the emission levels. Next is noise monitoring report. So the analysis of noise monitoring both within the premises and just outside the boundary of the project is also required. Next is quality assurance. So a detailed assurance plan is also included in the EMP which consists of all reference methods for implementation, for monitoring, calibration of equipments, relevant analytical techniques, standard reagents, collection and presentation of results etc. Next one is safety and health. So reporting on the workers health must be done regularly as per the Factories Act. A section which gives details for mock safety drills of the concerned employees handling emergency must also be included as a part of the on-site emergency plan. Now let's see what are the documents required to develop an environment management plan. So the business will need documents like organizational charts, emergency plans, environmental monitoring standards, operational procedures, monitoring records, quality assurance plans for monitoring, environmental and related legislations. So with this we conclude this video. For more details contact Enterclimate from the details provided below. We at Enterclimate have an excellent team of experts who can assist you with your planning, registration and authorization process needed for your business. You can also comment down below for any queries that you may have. Thank you.